Hello, everyone. Today, I'm honored to be joined by a true Pace legend, Freddie Stabile, uh, who was recently inducted into the 2024 Pace Athletics Hall of Fame. I mean, just looking at your resume, over 800 career wins in your 43 seasons as a head coach, um, you know, the legacy of excellence that you have created. Thank you so much. We can't wait to hear about your journey. And thanks for coming on. Oh, no problems. It's, uh, it's great to be here. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's get through that. Obviously, I mentioned in the, the uh, intro a little bit about your longevity and how long you've been uh, one of the head coaches at the Pace program. Um, over four decades. So, and over that, that time, 800 career victories. What do you attribute to that longevity and success, both on and off the field? Uh, I guess being here, it's just been one big family. Uh, for years, and that's what brings you back to a place. It really is. Uh, the people that I work with, the staff, the support staff, I mean, they're just phenomenal. And when you're around those people, it makes it easy to want to come back. There's no reason to leave. And, and the student athletes that we've had, I've been very fortunate. They're, again, good people. Um, and I believe that that's because we work very hard to make sure they're the right people for Pace University and for our softball program. And it's just been a pleasure to have them with us. Yeah, I know as the Pace Athletics program, we could be thrilled to have you back every single year. But um, over recent times, um, specifically the last nine seasons, you've led your teams and some of the student athletes that you gave credit to uh, to a lot of great achievements through that time as well. Uh, five NCAA tournaments, um, also the program's first only 10 championship during that span. So, what do you think contribute to, to that recent surge of you guys being a top person in the conference? Um, I, I really believe a big part of it was being able to be here full time. Uh, prior to that, I was a part time coach. Uh, and and basically, it's I was running from the high school to Pace. And um, <laughs> Chase. <laughs> Chase, get out. <laughs> Sorry. We're all You're good. back in my office. We have a special guest as well with yeah. Chase. <laughs> He, he can open the doors. It adds to the interview. I love it. Yeah. So let, let's let's start with that again. Um, I guess part of the reason why I've been here for so long is the, the people that I'm working with are terrific. The student athletes are terrific. Um, you know, I've had an opportunity to be here the last 10 years full time. And I believe that that's been a big part of it where we're really here for the student athletes whenever. And I think for them, that was really important. And that's when we saw the, the change uh, once I started full time here. So you uh, think when you started to pick up on the full time, that's a huge reason of why the. the... I, I believe so. Oh. We were able to give them more attention, the attention that they deserved, and, and that really helped them to flourish. And one by one, you know, it, it enabled us to do a better job recruiting, to spend more time recruiting, to spend more time with them to make sure that all of these student athletes were the right student athletes for Pace. Mm -hmm. So now, now it's just trying to continue that. Uh, moving on, uh, one of the specific uh, achievements, um, the 2016 NE10 Championship was a s historic moment, not only for the softball program, but Pace Athletics as a whole, the first time that we were able to bring home a uh, conference title. Uh, what did that victory mean to you and specifically to the players that were on that team, and how did it impact the program moving forward? Well, I, that was just such a great day. Um, we were here. That was one of our last years in Briarcliff, on the Briarcliff campus. Uh, we got to host the tournament, was, which was phenomenal. Um, Mike Wynn, Jair Pouncey, they did an incredible job with their staff helping us out. Um, and it, it, it really was just an incredible, incredible experience. Um, we played SNU in the finals. I remember the game and the day like it was yesterday. Uh, these kids just all really stepped up to the plate and literally and figuratively and were just phenomenal. And, you know, going into that game, uh, what, what were the emotions going like? Uh, it, it's just like the first time going. And you, even you said you were able to host. Uh, it, it, it was just it was incredible. We found out that we were going to be the number one seed and be able to host um, earlier in the week. I remember we were at a game. We were on. We were away. And I couldn't figure out. We have no phone policy, especially during games. It was in between games. And all of a sudden, my kids were like, oh, my God, oh, my God, yelling and screaming. I'm like, what the heck's going on? They were like, coach, we looked at our phones. I'm like, we won, we won. <laughs> so just getting to that point was, was incredible. Amazing. And uh, another huge uh, milestone, actually, specifically, uh, last season, was, uh, you celebrated your 800th career uh, win. Um, 
what about the uh, emotions in hitting that huge milestone? Um, what does it not only mean to you, but again, for the program as well? You know, I, I really, I can't take credit for it. I, I'm just the person who's leading the pack right now. It's the athletes that deserve all of those wins. They, they created those wins. They were here for those wins. A variety of different athletes were all part of those wins. They're, I attributed them to being their wins, really more so than mine wins. And I have to admit, I, I've just had a great staff. Braylon Edwards has been my right-hand man for years and years now. And I, I can't thank him enough. And if it wasn't for him, um, I don't think we would have gotten as far as we would have. Such a humble response to not uh, just over credit of uh, Honestly, I've noticed throughout uh, your responses so far, a lot of your um, giving credit to is more to the students that you have um, been able to coach throughout the years. And um, one of the questions I, I did have was, where, um, in addition to your coaching role, you've been a crucial person in supporting student athletes as well. Um, not only the head coach for the softball team, but also the associate athletic director for student success and services. Um, how do you balance both the athletic and academic development to your students that you deal with there? Um, probably, uh, I would have to say, I have no life. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, a lot of nights I'm here till, till late. I'm here for these kids, whatever sport, whatever they needed. A gentleman from one of the other teams just came in. He had a question a couple this morning. It's just being able to be here for them, and that's what makes the days go by fast. Mm -hmm. um, there's always a reason to be here, whether it's to watch a game or to be here for them. And they're such a part of my family and who I am. And I can't imagine not having them in my life. Uh, they're important to me. And they're the ones who make pace special. It's the student athletes that make it special. And, and any one of my players can tell you, and even some of our other teams can tell you that academics is everything. That, that has to be their number one staple when it comes to pace. And they're student athletes first. And that's very important to me. And I try to instill that with any of the athletes that I meet, how important it is and how important it is for them to do well. Because it's their success outside of their sport that's, that's going to take them home. That's a home run for them, what they do outside of their sport. Mm -hmm. It's, it's so nice to hear that, you know, everyone's just a, one big happy family uh, with Pace Athletics. Um, is it rewarding to see, like, you know, maybe seeing someone come in as a freshman and you work with them all the way up to your senior to oh, see that growth? Absolutely. Absolutely. They, they grow so much and you don't realize it. And I happen to have quite a few students who need a plane to get home. So them growing up and growing up quickly and their their immediate family isn't right there available for them to watch them grow and start to make the decisions on their own is it's really amazing to see and they don't necessarily see the transition of the four years that they make but we do we see from when they're a freshman you know how they're a little scared and now how they they come in and it's their second family and they know mm. that and they know that we really care about them as students about them as athletes and about them as people um, and i think that's part of the reason that most of our teams are so successful um or you know across one national championship well, they they know that they they believe in their coach and their coach believes in them our men's women's basketball teams have done well our football team has done well our lacrosse teams have done well field hockey brand new sports they, they've all done well because they really believe um how their teams you know, come together and then how their family they're a family mm -hmm. i mean uh with cross country this weekend took first place finish women's cross country that's awesome first time ever I mean, that's terrific that's great you know coach molly's been doing a great job with them so i think they see how passionate their coaches are for them to do well as students and athletes i remember covering uh, the softball team uh last season and you know you mentioned uh some players have to get get on a plane and go home and uh looking down your roster you have players from california texas from pretty much all over the mm -hmm. place um two from hawaii yeah yeah hawaii as well I, um you know when it, how do you like build the you know the bond between the teams and get them to be so close uh, together because I remember watching them they have all these celebrations on the field <laughs> as well that always you know it, it's so energizing to you know be in the stands and watch them like how do you grow the bond with those players that are from 
relatively all places of the world. Well, they, they kind of grow the bond themselves. Mm -hmm. They spend so much time on the field. Uh, they're competing on the field with each other, but that in the same respect is making them better. Mm -hmm. They're becoming better athletes in, in study hall. They all come for study hall. So they help each other. If somebody's having a problem with a particular subject, hey, does anybody know this subject? Can, can somebody help me? So they, they kind of get an opportunity to work with each other off the field and on the field. And then some of them live with each other in the townhouses and, and at different places on, in Elm and, uh, you know, so again, they get to know each other even a little bit better. So it just comes from spending a lot of time together and they become your friends and those are going to be your lifelong friends. Amazing. Uh, moving over back to you a little bit. Um, coaching for 43 seasons, as we mentioned in the intro, the longest. You keep reminding me. Yeah, no, no. no. Reminding me well, of the impressive. holes. It, no, oh, no, it's you're... impressive. The longest active head coach at all divisions. Um, and I wanted to mainly see um, if you have witnessed any of the changes in the sport and the students that you coached. What are some of the biggest challenges that you have faced throughout that time? Uh, as you were tenured as a head coach, and how have you adapted during the years? Well, so much has changed in the world and society. I mean, the kids mm -hmm. that we're bringing in now don't even know what 9-11 was. Oh, you know, yeah. they weren't born yet, some of them. So you say to yourself, it's a whole different generation. They, they, these kids also live through COVID. Mm -hmm. A whole different way they deal with things. Um, you know, not having a lot of face-to-face -face, uh, interaction during that year and a half of COVID. So there's so many different things that have touched these student-athletes in, if that happened in the world, that that impacts how they behave when they come to school. So I, I think that it's really just a matter of being lucky in some respect, you know, getting student athletes who want to be student athletes first, bringing them here to the school, and then them enjoying them being here, enjoying the, you know, the kids from the West Coast, the four seasons, it's beautiful right now. The colors are absolutely amazing. Some kids have never experienced that. So we're, we're bringing that experience to them as well, the four seasons. Some of them can't wait to see snow. I'd rather not see it, um, but they can't wait to see it. Yeah. So th these, all, these things bring everything together and, and really help unify them. And then they have a place to go. My East Coast kids go to the West Coast. They have friends. They go mm -hmm. there to visit. They go home with them. And it's great. And then the, the West Coast kids stay around on the East Coast and Thanksgiving and some of the holiday times that you can't go home. So they, they kind of go with one of our kids. It's local. So it's, it's really great to see. Yeah, I, I grew up in New York and I, I'm right there with you. I can stay away from the snow. I, I'd be visiting the people down in the West Coast no matter what. Uh, it's, it's very evident that you hold your players to such a high standard um, uh, no matter what. Um, throughout your tenure as the head coach, you built such a winning culture. Uh, 74 Air Conference players, several Air American honors. Um, what kind of culture have you tried to build within the post softball program? Especially uh, you mentioning um, academics is pretty much the biggest thing. Academics is number one, and they know that it's so important for them to really do well. So we try to instill that from day one from one, in the recruiting process we instill that that that's going to be a priority here and if it's not going to be your priority then this might not be the best place for you for softball so that that in itself brings a lot of them together because they are very serious about their academics and pursuing their field of study so that that solves that problem in so many ways and we just try to keep them grounded and hey softball is a game you got to have fun every day and we do we laugh every day and that's very, very important to us. You've got to laugh. You've got to be happy with the people who you're around and enjoy your day. If you don't enjoy your day, then maybe you've got to rethink, okay, what's going on? Because it's, it's important to be happy. You've got to be happy. Of course, yeah. I, I remember uh, something you said to me last, last season uh, <laughs> with the softball team, and it, it stuck to me. I thought it was the best thing ever that you keep your games exciting no matter what. <laughs> we keep the fans engaged. <laughs> It could be winning by 10. It's almost like the Mets playing, but better than the Mets. <laughs> uh, really, recently, the Yankees, the last two games, okay? Yeah. You're ahead, and then you fall behind, and then mm -hmm. you manage to get ahead again. <laughs> um, they, they keep the fans engaged. It's, the game is not over until the seventh inning. It's very rarely over. It's gonna, they're going to either let the other team in the door because you don't want them to go away feeling bad, or you're going to come back and keep the game exciting. So um, it's a little hard on the coaching staff, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's great for anybody watching the game. Of course. Uh, I promise I'm almost done. Uh, just a couple more questions to wrap it up. But um, 
I wanted to see if you had advice for any uh, young coaches that are coming in, uh, starting out their new coaching career within uh, the collegiate level. Um, and they look over to your incredible career. What advice would you have to offer to them into building a successful program and fostering long-term player development? I would have to say the, the main thing is you got to know the players that you're bringing in and do the, to spend a lot of time trying to get to know them, which is difficult in this day and age with text messaging and phone calls. Um, but I like phone calls. I like seeing these people. I like hearing their voices, hearing the intonation in their voices. Are they excited to be here? And that once you have the people who really want to be here, the rest comes easy. Um, if we, we don't want to keep telling kids, we, we don't want to win by default. We want you to come to pace because this is where you really want to be mm -hmm. and if you really want to be here it's going to work um, and for the most part we've been very fortunate you know with, with putting the right people here in our uniform and getting the right ones and, and that's number one and then you have to believe in them because sometimes they don't believe in themselves. So it's important that they get that reinforcement from the coaching staff that, hey, you're a good person, you're a good athlete, maybe you had a bad day, but just keep working hard, it's gonna come. And, and, and that is also very important. You have to encourage them to keep, can just work hard, continue and work hard. Amazing, and one final question, and specifically for the vision of this specific program, um, What's next for uh, you and the Pace Softball program? Do you have any specific goals or plans to continue leading uh, this team? We do. We're, we're, we're ready to go to the World Series. <laughs> I, I think that we have the team that's capable to do it. Um, I, they're going to keep working hard. They're going to keep getting stronger. But I believe we have the, the staff. I believe we have the ability. I believe we have the quality athletes. I believe they have the mindset to want to go all the way, to want to get to the end. Um, we're so close. We've been so close for the past two years. We're, we're right there. So I, I think this year, or I hope this year, we're going to get over the top and get to where we want to be at the end. I have your eyes on another uh, any 10 title down the road? <laughs> yes, that is, that is well. That is well. I love it. It's, 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 it's great. It's like I said, this is a, a really unique group of, of athletes mm -hmm. that they they feel it they see it they know it can happen and they realize that they can get it done well coach uh thank you so much for taking time to share your incredible journey with all of us uh today uh your impact on space athletics not only as the coach but also the film department has touched lives both on and off the field so uh, again i wanted to thank you for making time and uh, uh congratulations once again on thank being you. inducted into the pace hall of fame thank you it's a tremendous honor of course thank you yeah.